Samantha. Hmm. So what do you think about when you hear the term financial institutions? Uh, yeah, I agree. The term financial institution is really intimidating to me. Um, but I know what I think about like a bank, right? Yeah. Like that's that's the most common uh, financial institution that I encounter. But I know that there are a ton of others. Out yeah, there. exactly. Banks are probably the most common type of financial institutions that we run across on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. But there are a ton of different financial institutions out there that accept deposits, make loans, exchange currency, amongst thousands of other things. And each establishment is different, as in it can offer one or a combination of these services. Right. And these financial institutions <laughs> can be broken down into two categories, depository institutions and non-depository institutions. Yep. Not suppository. No suppository Samantha, that's just nasty. Just saying. I mean, it sounds similar, right? They're, they're listening. <laughs> Are you? Anyways, guys, sorry about that. <laughs> but a depository institution is actually legally allowed to accept money from people like you and I. Mm -hmm. And these includes banks, credit unions, savings and loan associations. And nowadays, there are a lot of digital-only banks where you can actually manage everything online. Yeah, and that's pretty much all I use. Yeah, I agree. Like, my phone is literally my go-to for all of my banking mm -hmm. information. I hate setting foot into the bank. You can even chat with people and tell them what you want. They'll send it to you via email, and they'll cooperate. It's like the best thing ever. The best thing ever. While non-depository institutions can be private or government run, they serve as the middleman between savers and borrowers, but they don't accept cash. Some examples of these are mutual funds, investment trusts, or insurance companies. Boom. It's important to note that a lot of financial institutions are actually labeled as a bank, but it'll do you a world of good to actually understand what type of financial institution they are. There's actually a difference between credit unions and banks, although they give you the absolutely identical services. So the biggest difference between credit unions and banks is their overall goal mm -hmm. and how they're run. Banks run as a corporation, which basically has to make a profit for their owners or shareholders. A credit union is like a bank, but it's actually run as a non-for-profit organization owned by its members and operating for their benefits. Mm -hmm. In order to be part of a credit union, you must be a part of a qualifying organization or live or work in the community nearby. Right. An example of a really popular credit union is the Navy Federal Credit Union. This is open to people in the Army, Coast Guard, Air Force, Navy, and other service members and their families. Uh, this credit union is known for giving fantastic benefits, really above and beyond customer service, and other special offers. So another good thing to consider is that a lot of credit unions, banks, and all the other financial institutions that we mentioned are actually highly regulated. Mm -hmm. So it gives us, the people who use them, you know, on a regular basis, some comfort that our cash is like A-OK. -okay. Right. An example is the FDIC, which stands for Federal Deposit <laughs> Insurance Corporation. <laughs> and basically, that's a government agency that insures the money that you deposit into a bank account up to $250,000 per person per bank. Yeah, so all that means is that if the bank was ever to go under and then they lost your money, you'd be insured for up to $250,000 at any bank. So you'd get your money back. So, Roos, yes. are check cashing centers banks? Because they give you money. They do, but they're actually not considered a bank. Although they operate like a bank and you can go in, you know, cash a check or, mm -hmm. or send somebody some money, they're not regulated by the FDIC or regulated mm -hmm. at all. Um, one of the huge downsides of a check cashing place is that they have these crazy fees to do transactions that you would normally do at a bank. Absolutely. For example, most check cashing places will charge a $5 fee plus 1% of the amount that you're trying to cash. So for an example, when I was in high school, okay. I was actually given a $1,000 scholarship for my church for college, Ooh. you know. And um, <laughs> I was, though, because, you know, you're young and oh, that's a lot of money. That's on. a lot of money when you're young. But anyway, had I taken that $1,000 check to a check cashing center, mm -hmm. I would have had to pay $15 just to get the cash. Fortunately, I didn't because I took it to my credit union and got the full $1,000 deposited in my account. Okay, so it's about to get real. real. We're going to talk about non-deposit institutions. So just hang in there with us for a little more. There's a lot of complicated key terms. We're going to list them all on the screen for you so you can understand, and we promise it's not going to be like a wah, 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 wah. <laughs> An example of a non-deposit financial institution includes investment companies. Investment companies help individuals invest their money in professionally managed portfolios made up of different stocks or bond securities. Investment companies allow individuals to allocate their money based on their financial goals. 
For example, when you set up your retirement fund, it's usually based on a goal of being able to retire at age 65. Your portfolio would be made up of securities that are set to increase over a longer period of time rather than short-term gains. Investment banks typically deal more with businesses, governments, and high net worth individuals, like people who have more than $5 million or more in assets. That's going to be me one day, girl. Yes, yes. me too. Investment banks are most commonly used to achieve financial requirements of IPOs, initial public offerings, share offerings, and corporate mergers or reorganizations. Brokerage firms are common financial institutions that you have probably come across but didn't know fell into this category. Brokerages act as the middleman between us and the companies on the stock market, buying and selling securities for a commission. And just an FYI, you may have heard the term broker used in many circumstances. Like for example, a real estate broker helps you purchase a house, an insurance broker helps you purchase insurance, and an investment broker will help you purchase securities. All right, gang. So I know we talked about a lot of complex topics today. It got a videos. little dry. It might have a little bit, you know, the wah, 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 wah. A little bit. But please, don't let that keep you from subscribing to GenerationWealthy.org and giving us your feedback. A credit union is, I'm supposed to talk about a bank, huh? I don't know. I think I, I am. Know you're lying. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> Bank, but it'll do you a world of good to under. Sorry. Okay. It's okay. Ah! Okay, cut it. Because I 